Hey, hey, hey. All right, so we finally got that news update on the Kawhi Leonard injury, and unfortunately for the Clippers and just NBA fans in general, Kawhi's injury that caused him to miss the last couple of games of the Clippers playoff run was a partial ACL tear, and as of now, it looks like he's going to be out for at least nine months. So injuries just continue to take away from the NBA experience, but I wanted to make this video as a sort of follow-up to a previous video that I made where I basically went over the Clippers' future and how it's in Kawhi's hands what decisions will be made for the Clippers' front office, pretty much just based off of whatever Kawhi decides in this free agency and the next one. Because it's always fun to see your hard work just get completely erased by something completely out of your control. But anyway, again, I just wanted to make this as a sort of a follow-up to that previous video. I'll even link it if you want to go watch it for some odd reason, but anyway, uh, the big question is what will the Clippers be doing without their star player in Kawhi Leonard for next season? And I got a whole bunch of answers for it. First off, this should pretty much confirm that Kawhi will be accepting his player option for $36 million for the next season. Obviously, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for him to enter free agency and decline it and just not play for whichever team signs him. And I don't know why a team would want to sign him for the season because he's going to be missing it. So secondly, this opens up the opportunity for Paul George to be an MVP candidate yet again. Despite your feelings on him as a player, statistically, he did a really, really good job in the regular season and the playoffs. At the very least even if you don't like Paul George as a player again at the very least you can say that the opportunity will be there for him to be an MVP caliber player I think if he continues to play like he did last season he should be in the conversation of maybe at least like you know top 10 top 7 maybe even top 5 obviously he'll have to put up the stats and the wins to prove it the wins will probably be the hardest part again without Kawhi but I think the conversation opens back up Thirdly, re-signing Nikola Batum and Reggie Jackson has become even more important. These two guys were very, very valuable, especially in the playoffs as Reggie Jackson just somehow became a 20 point per game scorer, and Nikola Batum is just one of the best glue guys in the league, someone who can shoot the ball, pass, play make, defend all five positions pretty well, and they had him on a minimum contract, and um, unfortunately both these guys are probably better than a minimum contract going into next season so it'll definitely be interesting if they're willing to take some less money to stay in LA or if they're gonna go somewhere else since Kawhi is probably gonna be out for the whole season you know they'll get the injury exception that's common with these injuries and potentially they could use that to sign one of those two or they might go out and just get a whole nother free agent wing to replace him in general Either way, Batum and Jackson should probably slide towards the top of the list for things that the Clippers need to get done, and uh, Kawhi's injury exception, should it come, could potentially help in that situation. Fourthly, I'm very interested to see what Serge Ibaka does now since he has a player option for next season as well. He was someone who I think came to the Clippers because of his previous connection with Kawhi in uh, Toronto when they won a championship together. Unfortunately, he missed a lot of his first season with injuries, now he has the player option and you know with Kawhi being out for the season Clippers are most likely not going to be finals contenders you know with that being the reason that Ibaka probably came to them in the first place I'm very interested to see if he declines his player option and looks elsewhere for another championship opportunity. Fifthly the Clippers have one pick in the upcoming 2021 NBA draft that's pretty loaded for the most part at least that's what it's looking like right now. 25th overall that's definitely in the range where they could get someone who could be a high level impact player. And with the Kawhi news recently coming out I would not at all be surprised if they shift towards drafting Someone that's like an NBA ready wing, maybe an NBA ready guard since they do need some help in the guard position as well. And as for the guys that will for sure be on the roster heading into next season, I think there's going to be a whole lot of opportunities there as well. As the Clippers might actually be able to get some youth on the court for good now, we saw two guys in Luke Kennard and Terrence Mann absolutely had some amazing runs in the NBA playoffs most recently. Terrence Mann obviously had the huge game against the Jazz. Uh, Luke Kennard had some spot minutes here and there where he was, you know, proven, proven, continuing to prove that he is a deadly shooter. Both of these guys should see more minutes with Kawhi out for the full season. If you look back at last year, they both averaged less than 20 minutes per game, and I think that will definitely change for this new year. Not to mention, Luke Kennard will now be making $12 million plus a year. His contract is kicking in. So I would hope that they see this as a reason to get him some more minutes. And Terrence Mann, I think he still has a whole lot of room to improve as an NBA player. 
They liked using him as a sort of small ball five, you know, pick and roll roll man who could hit shots, spread the floor, make the right pass, and play good defense. But he's, he's shown some flashes of self-creation as well, and I think it's definitely something that's going to have to be monitored as we head into the next season. With Kawhi, that's a whole lot of field goal attempts that are going to be left for the rest of the team to take, and I would love to see Terrence Mann eat up some of those attempts. Overall, at the end of the day, injuries continue to suck. Uh, if there was some way that we could go out and abolish them from the NBA, I would 100% be for it. Uh, especially considering the fact that this whole battle of LA playoff series that fans have been wanting since the day all these stars came to LA, you know, with the Lakers and Clippers respectively. Every day we just seem to stray further and further from this actually being a possibility and it actually happening. And yeah, it's just, it's just another thing that injuries have ruined in the NBA discourse. But one last thing before I go, I've also been seeing a whole lot of talk about people being worried about the type of player that Kawhi is going to be once he comes back from this injury, you know, saying that he might not have that many years left in him, he might only play till his mid-30s, he might not be nearly as good as he was pre-injury. And all this stuff just really confuses me. Kawhi is only 30 years old, and while yes, he has had a pretty distinct injury history, I think we're at a point now where just with modern medicine, modern doctors, all that, you know, good stuff, it's very rare that these injuries are ending players' careers, and, you know, we've just, we've grown as a community. <laughs> we're even at a point where most of the time when these star players get a bad injury like this, they're able to take the time off, rehab, and most of the time come back even stronger than they were before. Not to mention, we just saw a 32-year-old Kevin Durant who had a much, much worse injury, tearing his Achilles rather than just a partially torn ACL. Even after that, he came back and is still the dominant player that he once was. Did he lose a couple percentage points in terms of overall health? Maybe, but he's still a very, very good NBA player and I wouldn't expect anything different for Kawhi Leonard. And as for how many years he has left in the league, I don't think this would be any different than any other star player who's had some injury concerns throughout their career. He'll probably play to his mid to late 30s. We have LeBron James right now who's playing into his late 30s, could potentially even his 40s, who knows, but I think having LeBron has definitely made us a bit spoiled in that aspect. And I think we should just leave it up to Kawhi of when he wants to retire because, you know, it's his body, he knows when he's been broken down and won't be able to compete at the highest level anymore. And it's on us to the fans to just enjoy it while it lasts and, you know, enjoy it while we can. Let Kawhi heal, let the man rest, and, um, yeah, I, again, injuries, injuries just suck.